The question of how the cosmos began has long been one of the unanswered inquiries of science. So far, through the use of advanced technologies, we have only been able to access data up to about 380,000 years after the Big Bang and have achieved a general consensus about most of the events that followed. Although many hypotheses of physics and cosmology are based on discovery, insight, or philosophy, and despite the various theories regarding the initial stages of the cosmic expansion, there haven't been any reliable theories about the moment of the emergence of the universe. Indeed, how did the cosmos come into existence? The Cosmic Black Hole, Episode 2 of the T-Consciousness Cosmology Documentary Series. The perspectives presented in this documentary are based on the hypotheses proposed by Science Fact. In its research, other than matter and energy, Science Fact addresses a third element of the universe called T-Consciousness. In this perspective, one of the most mysterious, unknown, and astonishing subjects facing humankind is T-Consciousness, which is the source of matter and energy. T-Consciousness cosmology studies the cosmos from the perspective of T-Consciousness. Therefore, in this view, the hypotheses offered are not based on mathematical formulas, physics concepts, and space observations, as T-Consciousness is neither matter nor energy, but it is the very foundation for the formation and creation of matter and energy. From the viewpoint of science fact, after an unimaginably intense crush and subsequent quench, the cosmos is squeezed into an infinitely small point, getting ready for a new emergence. At this moment, everything is dark. The mechanism of this regression and crush is somewhat different from the big crunch theory. But how can we describe this moment? The closest phenomenon we can find within our cosmos to explain this theory is a supermassive black hole. Although this is comparing the incomparable, it makes it possible to describe the conditions of that moment. Let us take a look at how a black hole is formed inside the cosmos. These are the final moments for a red supergiant star that has reached the stage of iron production inside its core. Compression exceeds the threshold of what is known as the Chandrasekhar limit, and the star disintegrates with a hypernova explosion. But the intense gravitational force pulling the star's mass into itself is so high that this concentrated Dense mass heavily distorts space-time, giving birth to a new black hole. There are countless black holes in the cosmos of various sizes that are classified into four categories based on their behavior. A Schwarzschild black hole, the simplest type of black hole with one event horizon and one photon sphere that has no electric charge and does not spin. The Reisner Nordstrom, a black hole with two event horizons and one photon sphere with an electric charge and no spin. The Kerr black hole, a spinning oval shaped black hole without an electric charge. It has one singularity point, two event horizons and two photon spheres. The Kerr Newman black hole, structurally similar to a Kerr black hole, with the exception of having an electric charge and a ring shaped singularity. As the name suggests, a black hole is invisible unless the conditions are right for visibility. One of the ways we know it exists 
is by observing the curvature of light coming from the distant stars behind it. But why black? To see an object, we need a number of factors. First, the object itself. Second, a light that reflects off of the object and reaches our eyes. But what if the reflection of light doesn't happen? We will fill these glass containers with liquid glycerin and watch what happens. Since the light refractive index is the same for the glass and liquid glycerin, we see that the container inside is starting to disappear. And if we fill it up completely, we will no longer see the container. So unless the reflected light reaches our eyes, the object remains invisible. Black holes are likewise not visible to the naked eye. And one way of detecting them is by observing the curvature of light passing by the black hole from distant stars. Of course, there are other ways of detecting the location of a black hole in space. For example, detecting the X-ray emission and gamma radiation from a star collapsing into a black hole, or analyzing the oscillation of a star with an unseen companion like a black hole. The term black is used to describe this hole in space because once light reaches the event horizon, it cannot escape or exit. It is observed to be black because of this intense gravity. For example, let's take a look at this cube which is constructed according to the properties of the thermodynamic black body. We can still see the various angles and faces of this object. But what would we see if the object was free of impurities, absorbing all the light and not allowing it to reflect? We would no longer see the object. But when it blocks the light coming from the objects behind it, we know it is there. So an object that absorbs light remains invisible so long as it doesn't pass in front of another object. Perhaps now you understand better why everything is black at the initial point of the cosmos. It is because the absence of light makes any kind of reflection impossible. T-consciousness cosmology introduces a special type of black hole that is different from all other black holes we know. Here, we will examine the process that leads to the birth of this black hole. To date, the cosmos has been assumed to be expanding, according to science fact. However, the cosmos is not expanding, but it is in the process of rebounding. Rebound refers to something returning to its original, natural, and primary state. Consider this spring. This is the natural state of a spring, free and relaxed without tension and stress. We will compress it by applying pressure. This is the highest point of tension and compression for the spring. As the spring releases tension, it rebounds, meaning that it returns to its natural and original state. Although the cosmos is becoming larger in comparison to its initial state, this growth or expansion, as it is referred to by conventional science, does not mean it is being stretched. It is as if the entire cosmos was compacted in a single point and is on a path returning to its original state. In other words, space, which is the main bedrock of the cosmos, is moving from a state of compression to a state of rest, free of stress or tension due to gravity. The rebounding cosmos leads all of the galaxies, stars, and masses toward the edge of the cosmos, gradually reaching the speed of light in the process. All matter and energy in the cosmos has now turned into waves with infinite wavelengths. Adopting the same intrinsic spiral motion as the cosmos. Space in the cosmos is made of infinite, invisible, and dark elastic mesh that can twist and turn within the expansive dimensions of the cosmos. In this documentary, the space mesh is shown in gray when in the state of rest, and shown in green 
when in the state of tension and stress. While rebounding from the initial point of ultra-compression, the cosmos, like a massive machine, experiences omni-axis motion and rotation by the infinite motion of its various components and their effects on one another. Likewise, waves moving toward the edge of the cosmos follow the same intrinsic spiral motion of the cosmos. It is, in fact, the intrinsic spiral motion of the cosmos that gives it a boundary and an outer edge which we call the edge of the cosmos, where the waves begin to regress. At the final point of the cosmic rebound, the waves become completely parallel and tangent to the edge of the cosmos. Following the intrinsic spiral motion of the cosmos, they return back inside. All of these waves move back into the cosmos, but it takes billions and billions of years for them to find the possibility of colliding with each other at some distance from the center of the cosmos. The result of this collision is the birth of gravity. Simultaneous with this newly born gravity, time is born as a countering force against gravity. This gravity exerts stress and tension on space, which up until now has been in a natural resting state. The stress and tension extends to the edge of space. Successive collisions lead to the creation of compressed waves. These collisions are now happening in every corner of the cosmos, creating numerous centers of gravity. These centers of gravity attract one another, creating a powerful center of gravity that leads to the formation of light dark matter. This event causes the space mesh to be pulled into the center of gravity. The compression of space leads to the formation of a type of dark matter that in science fact is known as dark dark matter, which is different from the dark matter that is defined by conventional science. It is important to note that there are two types of dark matter according to key consciousness cosmology. 1. Light dark matter, the result of intense contraction of matter and energy, so intense that light cannot pass through. 2. Dark dark matter, is a product of the dark energy of space. This matter is formed when the dark energy of space is intensely compressed. The matter formed in the gravitational center maintains visible frequencies for only a short period of time before it goes dark and becomes invisible. But to show this event, we need a visual representation. Dark dark matter moves toward the gravitational center from all directions. The power of gravity intensifies with the joining of dark dark matter to the center of gravity. The dark matter of space rushes toward the gravitational center and in one decisive blow makes a massive press or a formidable quench. The cosmic black hole is born. Cosmic black hole is the name given to this black pearl by Muhammad Ali Tahari, the founder of T-Consciousness Cosmology. No measurements of size and space are definable in the heart of the cosmic black hole. The cosmic black hole is smaller than any of our known values and there is no definable size. But to understand this concept, we shall compare the cosmic black hole with the smallest unit of distance defined by modern science. But exactly how small is a cosmic black hole.
It's hard to even imagine. Space and time do not exist outside a cosmic black hole, so we have considered a hypothetical space around it to enable us to examine and study it. To better describe the cosmic black hole, we will make comparisons with the known black holes in the cosmos and call them the intracosmic black holes. Different types of intracosmic black holes exist in space in countless numbers, which is why they have relative and variable parameters. Due to the inevitable principle of motion, nothing in the cosmos is static, and all the primary and secondary constituents of the cosmos like space, gravity, time, matter, and energy, and their products like temperature and light, are constantly changing and all are relative. Therefore, all the features governing intracosmic black holes are considered relative. But the cosmic black hole contains the entire cosmos inside itself. Everything inside is in unity, uniformity, and indistinguishable. Due to its dominance over the entire material universe, the cosmic black hole is independent has no outside exchange, and is, consequently, an absolute black hole that is utterly unique. The Pauli exclusion principle and the Chandra-Shekhar limit can be defined and are calculable in the formation of the intracosmic black holes. The Pauli exclusion principle states that no two identical fundamental particles can occupy the same quantum space. For example, two electrons can never be in the same place at the same time. It is because of this principle that a dying star with a mass larger than the Chandrasekhar limit implodes into itself and the remaining mass turns into a black hole. These principles govern all intracosmic black holes. Furthermore, in the intracosmic black holes, the relative shrinking of space to roughly the size of the Planck length, which is the smallest meaningful unit of length, is definable only up to the point of singularity of these black holes. However, neither electrons nor any other constituents of matter have any relevance in a cosmic black hole. And since the Pauli exclusion principle and the Chandra-Shekhar limit only apply when fundamental particles are present, for a cosmic black hole with a size far smaller than the Planck length, none such principles can apply. At the center of every intracosmic black hole, there is a point of extreme gravity where mass is infinitely compressed. It is here where space-time and all known laws completely change in nature. This point is called singularity. There is also a boundary around the intracosmic black hole where no mass or light can escape after it enters due to the extremely high gravitational pull. This is the point of no return, the event horizon. The distance between the event horizon and the singularity point is called the Schwarzschild radius. But since there is no space-time outside of the cosmic black hole after complete shrinkage of space, the Schwarzschild radius, the inner and outer event horizons, and all other aspects such as ergosphere and quiet region will no longer have any relevance. And as such, the cosmic black hole does not undergo any changes whatsoever. However, the Schwarzschild radius of the intracosmic black hole changes as it carries forward with increasing velocity.
The cosmos is in the process of rebounding, so everything within it has motion and velocity. The more the cosmos spreads out and the farther away objects move from each other, the velocity of galaxies and intracosmic black holes also increases in the direction of this rebound. Here we find that we are in motion. We have speed, acceleration, and direction. But how do we notice these parameters? By comparing our position to that of the bodies and objects around us. We have not slowed down, but have in fact increased our speed, turning in other directions as well. But why can we no longer feel any movement? Because we no longer have a point of reference to measure our displacement. This is precisely the case with the cosmic black hole, unparalleled and singular. We cannot assign it a velocity, since it is not encapsulated in space and time. And no velocity means no direction or axis of motion. Now, it is not clear whether the cosmic black hole is moving closer to us or we are moving closer to it, or if we are both moving toward each other. Keep in mind that this is only a hypothetical space that we have imagined, and we have no real presence at this particular point. Despite the efforts of cosmologists to explain the moment of the emergence of the cosmos and the events leading to it, they have not yet been able to arrive at a general consensus. By presenting the cosmic black hole hypothesis as part of the perspective held by science fact in T-consciousness cosmology, we are trying to shed light on this monumental event, the birth of the cosmos. If Hypothetically, the rebounding of the cosmos takes 50 billion years, the shrinking of the cosmos will take 50 billion years plus delta T2 time. In effect, the total compression time for the cosmos is equal to T equals T1 plus delta T2. With this assumption, the cosmos will reach its ultimate limit within 50 billion years. But the cosmic black hole will take 50 billion years plus delta T2 time to form. In one of the comparisons between the cosmic black hole and the intracosmic black holes, we found that in the singular and unparalleled state, the cosmic black hole does not have a point of reference for motion. Therefore, we cannot consider any speed, acceleration, or direction for it. However, the intracosmic black holes have motion, velocity, acceleration, and direction. But, being a function of a rebounding cosmos, these motions and increasing velocities have their consequences. Intracosmic black holes spin around their axis at high speeds and also move in alignment with the spreading space. In fact, the rebound speed is intrinsically increasing, which is why these black holes experience a constant increase in their velocity. According to science fact, the mesh presented here is only a feature of space. Any mass, including an intracosmic black hole, that moves through space is met with space resistance. The faster it moves, the higher the resistance. The point here is that the velocity of the black hole increases even more as the rebounding accelerates. This results in increasing resistance of the space mesh, speeding up the disintegration of the black hole. Because of the increasing speed, the intracosmic black holes lose their capacity to attract and won't be able to have the replacement energy they need to sustain themselves. They lose mass and energy both ways. So a black hole can only maintain its properties to a certain extent before unraveling over time. As mentioned before, the cosmic black hole has no motion and velocity, and there is nothing outside of it to cause friction and erosion. Therefore, 
it can preserve mass and matter inside itself. Temperatures vary in intracosmic black holes, and they are currently surrounded by the freezing temperatures of space, which is equal to 2.7 Kelvin. There is a temperature difference between the intracosmic black hole and its surrounding space. Therefore, this heat transfer will continue until the black hole has lost its heat and reached the same temperature as the cosmos. As a result, an intracosmic black hole will eventually lose all of its energy, reaching a temperature of absolute zero. On the other hand, as mentioned earlier, due to the absence of space around the cosmic black hole, it cannot transfer heat and energy, nor is it possible to lose its heat. No matter how large intracosmic black holes are, they all experience a phenomenon called the Hawking radiation. This radiation leads to a loss of mass and energy in a black hole because of the quantum effects at the edge of the event horizon, which is called black hole evaporation. This is why black holes do not increase in mass, will evaporate over time and eventually fizzle out. Since there is an absence of space around the cosmic black hole, it would have no Hawking radiation, and therefore would not evaporate. In intracosmic black holes, the four fundamental forces, including the gravitational force, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, and the electromagnetic force, are all distinguishable before the singularity point of these black holes where gravity is increasing. Of these four fundamental forces, however, only the force of gravity remains inside the cosmic black hole. By crushing the core of the atom, this near-infinite gravity distinguishes all other fundamental forces, causing them to completely lose their nature. Cosmobot, our robot assistant, has been programmed to pick up an apple from the table, lift it up and take its picture using its camera, all in three seconds. Let's take a look. Just as planned. Now we want Cosmobot to perform the same action, hypothetically, once in an intracosmic black hole and once in a cosmic black hole to see how much time it would take for him to complete this task from our perspective. Cosmobot is awaiting orders in our laboratory, the intracosmic black hole, and the cosmic black hole. If we don't play Cosmobot's motion inside the cosmic and intracosmic black hole at a high speed, Cosmobot seems completely motionless. But by speeding up the film, we can understand the tremendous difference in the way time is dilated in the cosmic black hole compared to the intracosmic black holes. Therefore, time for an observer outside an intracosmic black hole is relatively slow, but it is in its slowest possible state inside the cosmic black hole. Space is only relatively shrunk inside an intracosmic black hole. In other words, it has not yet reached its most critical and crumpled state. Comparatively, space inside a cosmic black hole is in an absolute state, or at the smallest possible volume. Space is in its most compressed and contracted state, which is, in effect, approaching but never reaching zero.
The energy and fundamental particles orbiting around powerful black holes create an aura and a bright current around them known as the photon sphere. Therefore, some of the intracosmic black holes have a photon sphere and an electric charge. The cosmic black hole, however, cannot have a photon sphere and electric charge because of the absence of space around it and the absence of energy and fundamental particles. The cosmic black hole is singular and unique. There is no mass outside of it for it to merge with. But intracosmic black holes have the ability to merge with one another, colliding upon approach to make a larger black hole with greater mass and stronger gravity. These comparisons have aided in giving us a better understanding of the features of a cosmic black hole by studying their differences with the black holes known by science. Also, in examining the rebound process of the cosmos, we learned how a cosmic black hole is formed. Now we will briefly touch on some of the unique features of a cosmic black hole which are not replicable nor comparable to any other part of the cosmos. As it was previously mentioned, all galaxies, stars, and masses will approach the speed of light during the rebounding process, turning into uncompressed waves with infinite wavelengths. These waves then return back toward the center of the cosmos and collide with one another. Space is also compressed under the influence of this gravity. As the gravity increases, Numerous black holes are formed in different regions of the cosmos, gradually merging together, but will get smaller instead of getting larger. The reason for this behavior is the new nature of gravity and the constant pressure of shrinking space into the center. Gravity also affects temperature, not allowing the heat waves to easily escape. Meanwhile, the pressure from the shrinking space intensely compresses the heat waves. A rare event is now in the making. Heat radiation that is being compressed into an unimaginable degree changes in nature and gives birth to a brand new, never before known type of matter. At the same time, the strong, newly formed graviton particles are also compressed toward the points of maximum gravity. Their wavelengths shorten and eventually turn into a new type of gravitational matter. Gravity is so intense that space energy is compressed to form dark, dark matter, rushing toward the gravitational center or the light, dark matter. Amid the turmoil, the pressing of space is also occurring. Everything is crushed into itself and compressed into the center of the future cosmos. Gravitational waves and magnetic waves are all contracted. The weak nuclear force and the strong nuclear force cease to exist as the fields are wiped out. Waves, Particles and electromagnetic fields are all no longer relevant. Under these conditions, length and distance are meaningless, which means the Planck length is no longer applicable. Inside the cosmic black hole, an absolute matter is formed out of the unity of this new type of gravity and compressed heat of a new nature, light dark matter and dark dark matter. Here, everything becomes indistinguishable achieving oneness in a remarkable unity. We call this TAM, or Tahari Absolute Matter. Space is now at its most compressed and contracted state under the influence of the near-infinite gravity of the cosmic black hole. In conjunction, time enters as an countering force, releasing space from stress and compression. We recognize time as a force, 
because it has both quantity and direction. To release gravity from tension and stress, time inside the cosmic black hole is in its maximum and infinite state. But when it reaches the edge of the cosmos, time is zero, as there is no tension or gravity. In the cosmic black hole, gravity is so infinitely strong that at the center of TAM, all motion suddenly stops. Now, we are ready for a brand new cosmos.